Hi, I'm Dr. Mukda Vandavar, working in as a gynecologist and obstetrician in Pace Hospital, High Tech City, Hyderabad. Today, we are going to discuss about uterine fibroids. Uterine fibroids, also called as leomyomas or myomas, these are mass or growth that are seen inside the muscle of the uterus. So, these are non-cancerous growth. Uh, at times, uh, it is not very uncommon finding. It occurs at least 45 to 50 percent of women in their lifetime. It is common in the young reproductive age group, that is in the age group of 20 to 30 years. Now, depending on the location of a fibroid in the uterus, they can be divided into number of types. For example, submucosal fibroid. So, now submucosal fibroid is the fibroid growing in the muscle below the uterine lining or into the cavity of the uterus. Now, subintramural, as the name suggests, it is growing in the muscle of the uterus. Subserosal. Subserosal are the uh, fibroids which are growing outside the uterus, uh, can be completely outside or in half embedded inside. Now, depending on if the uh, submucosal if the subserosal fibroid is attached by a pedicle, it is called as pedunculated fibroid. As such, the cause of uterine fibroid is unclear, but it is seen like it is dependent on the in, uh, increase in the estrogen level. Like for example, in pregnancy, estrogen levels are very high and that is why it tends to increase. And in menopause, where the estrogen falls significantly, uh, it, is dec it decreases in size. Now, even though the causes are unclear, there are multiple risk factors which we can attribute to the increase or common findings in the fibroid. For example, uh, family history, like if your mother or your sister has a fibroid history, then you are at increased risk of having fibroid. Then others like obesity, PCOD, nulliparity, even uh, never been, uh, nulliparity has never been pregnant other than that early menarche. Uh, lifestyle also these are all associated risk of fibroid so the most common symptom by which the patient comes to us is mainly uh, abnormal uterine bleeding which can be either heavy bleeding or intermenstrual bleeding or both can be presented together the second common reason is dyspareunia which is painful intercourse the other reason is dysmenorrhea that is uh, pain during periods uh, the other uh, reasons which uh, young females come to is us is subfertility or infertility or early pregnancy losses these are some of the very very common reasons increased in uh, uh, pelvic pressure or they feel they are uh, growing in size like they feel that their uh, body is increasing weight that is basically they can feel the mass arising from the pelvis and other than that pelvic pain can be presented or sometimes when they grow in size they can cause pressure symptoms like when they grow in the front they cause increased urination or UTI like symptoms when they grow at the posterior side of the uterus at that time they can cause uh, constipation or uh, painful defecation all these can be associated with fibroids now the more common symptom as I said is uh, heavy bleeding so because of that patient can be uh, having anemia that is low hemoglobin then other than that uh, due to pressure symptoms there can be bowel and bladder problems uh, other than that subfertility subfertility is majorly because of submucosal fibroid submucosal fibroid which disturbs the uterine cavity or sometimes even the distorted shape of uterus because of other types of fibroids can also lead to uh, subfertility or infertility then uh, during pregnancy it can be either a preterm delivery and then uh, associated with preterm delivery problems can happen then sometimes it grows uh, in size during pregnancy and even it can degenerate it, it can degenerate and which leads to uh, pain so there can be a lot of pain during pregnancy in the fibroid that is called red degeneration of the fibroid So, when the patient comes to us, the first thing we do is examine the patient. That is per abdomen examination. In per abdomen examination, we can feel if the fibroid is very big, grown in size, we can feel as a mass growing from the pelvis. 
other than that bimanual examination in that we can see uh, feel the uterus is distorted in shape or even sometimes mass can be felt separately arising from the uterus other than that imaging techniques can also be used uh, to diagnose and confirm the finding of fibroid that is ultrasound there are different types of ultrasound that can be performed for example transvaginal ultrasound in this uh, we can see a submucosal fibroids or small fibroids very easily subserosal fibroids can be better diagnosed by abdominal scan even if we are unclear about the diagnosis of fibroid or exact size of it then we can do a fibroid mapping by doing an MRI scan. For the confirmed and final diagnosis, we can even go for a diagnostic hysteroscopy or diagnostic laparoscopy. So basically, asymptomatic fibroids might not require treatment at all. But then when symptomatic fibroids are there or symptoms like when pregnancy, recurrent pregnancy loss or uh, pressure symptoms or any symptoms uh, can be accordingly resolved. For example, there can be a medical line of management, there can be a surgical line of management or radiologic line of management. So medical, there are multiple drug options uh, available for the treatment of fibroids. But uh, to tell you this is not the permanent solution or this cannot be a long term option as we can only stop the growth of the fibroids or shrink it to little bit little bit of, of size but once we stop the medicines there is a chance that it might regrow again then also this uh, this drugs that we give that cannot be used if you want to conceive so the medical line of management might not work for all type of symptoms now coming to surgical line of management. Now in surgical line of management, hysteroscopic myomectomy uh, that is this is generally used for submucosal fibroid. In this we don't make any incision, we go via the cervix and we see the fibroid inside and we examine how it is and we resect it from the uh, uterus. So that is only used for submucosal fibroid and not for any other type of fibroid. The recovery period is generally of 2 to 3 days and uh, it's a good procedure uh, basically for a submucosal fibroid a patients facing with recurrent pregnancy loss. So this can be a very nice procedure. Then myomectomies. So myomectomies can be of different types, laparoscopic myomectomy, robotic myomectomy or even open myomectomies. So selection of patient is very important in all type of myomectomies. According to the uh, method we are using to do myomectomy, the recovery period might change from 3 days to even 2 weeks. Like if in open surgery, the recovery period might range from 7 days to 14 days also. And uh, this can be done for all the type of fibroids, um, even the larger fibroids can also be tried and removed by laparoscopy method. Then other method, uh, other thing to do is hysterectomy. This is generally done for the patients who are not desiring for any future fertility. For this, uh, hysterectomy can be performed. Now, hysterectomy can also be performed in various methods like open hysterectomy or even laparoscopic hysterectomy. And the last option that is available is radiological procedure. So, in radiological thing, there is something called uterine artery embolization. This is mainly done for, uh, mainly done when there is uh, no requirement of future pregnancies. Also, in this, what we do is exactly we block the vessel that is supplying the uterus and in this way the fibroid will degenerate and then eventually there will be decrease in the size of fibroid. So, uh, this is also a very good procedure. Uh, the recovery period is quite good and also the shrink of the fibroid is seen in uh, 3 to 6 months period. So, as such saying, there is no exact way or a method that by which we can prevent because the cause is unknown and also it can run in the family. So, in that case, you cannot do anything for that. But then uh, there are some things which we can actively do like... Uh, uh, lifestyle management that is lifestyle management any which ways is very 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 necessary 
like they can uh, control the hormonal imbalance that is running in your body uh, by controlling uh, proper diet and exercise other than that early detection can be a very good thing like uh, if you are known case or at increased risk getting an ultrasound done every one to two years can help you prevent the long-term complication of a grown fibroid or a big fibroid Uh, yes, there is increased risk of you having fibroid. If your mother or your sister has a, had a history of fibroid, then definitely you are at increased risk of fibroids. Uterine fibroid doesn't actually go away. Uh, you need to take the treatment for that if you are symptomatic. But if you are asymptomatic and you have already completed your family and you don't have any complaints regarding it, then yes, after menopause, they might shrink in size and eventually go. So, uh, long-standing uh, uterine fibroids which has underwent a degeneration uh, like cystic degeneration in postmenopausal women might convert into a cancerous form also but it's a rare phenomenon but it does happen. Uh, the size of the uterine fibroid doesn't actually matter. Uh, it is the symptoms and also the type of fibroid which is present. Uh, like for example, a 6 cm fibroid can also be sometimes non-symptomatic uh, and sometimes even 2 cm fibroid growing inside the cavity of the uterus which is leading to multiple abortion is dangerous. So, the size of the fibroid actually doesn't matter. It is the symptoms and the, pre and the location where it is present which actually matters. So yes, in PCOS, there is a lot of hormonal imbalance. So these people uh, tend to have a lot of high estrogen because of which there is increase uh, in the tendency of growing fibroids. So yes, PCOD uh, can be one of the risk factor for fibroids. Uh, yes, definitely uterine fibroid can cause irregular period because there can be hormonal imbalance or uh, they can cause multiple periods or increase in the bleeding or even uh, amenorrhea which is no periods at all. Yes, that's called as dyspareunia. This is one of the uh, symptoms for which the present come to us basically. Uh, definitely uh, uterine fibroid might lead to dyspareunia. That is painful intercourse. Uh, yes, exercise uh, in a way is very good. Why? Because it will control your stress, which will control the amount of estrogen circulating in your body. And yes, it can prevent uh, uterine fibroid and it can prevent many other things as well. Uh, yes, pregnancy is possible. It depends on the type of the fibroid and also where it is growing and how big it is. Like a small submucosal fibroid can also lead to infertility and a big subserosal fibroid can also grow normally and there cannot be any, there might not be any problem in pregnancy also. So it depends on the place where it is growing. Uh, no, a uterine fibroid uh, is a mass or a, a tumor that is growing inside the muscle of the uterus and polyps are something which arises from the endometrium. It can be uh, inside the endometrium. So, both of these are the two different things. Uh, so, in any type of fibroid, symptomatic, not symptomatic, uh, depending on wherever it is or whatever the size of the fibroid is and whatever the age of the patient is, definitely you should visit your uh, consultant obstetrician and gynecologist for reaching out to more queries and getting better evaluated and better treated and you can follow up with them for a long term management of the fibroid also. So, for any queries, you can uh, get in touch with me uh, by contacting Pace Hospital. My name is again Dr. Mukta, uh, working here in Pace Hospital.